All right, so logarithmic functions, finding the inverse is part one. I get some of you are like, that's not a logarithmic function, Charlie. Yeah, I, I get it. I just want to go over quickly how to, how to take an inverse. And there are a couple of ways to do it. This is the way I usually do it. I usually solve for x first. So I'm going to take this and just solve for x. That gives us y minus 5 is equal to 3x. What did I do? I added negative 5 to get rid of this. Negative 5 to both sides, right? Um, and then going to divide both sides by 3. So we get y minus 5 divided by 3 is equal to x, right? And then lastly, just going to switch, right? I'm going to switch the x and the y. So let's do this this way so you can see what I did here. Switch the x and the y. Switch the x and the y. So here's the y. I'm just going to switch them now and say this, that y is equal to x, right? Minus 5 over 3. <coughs> So this is the inverse of this, okay? So let this be f of x. And this is the inverse of f of x, all right? Uh, we could talk about how to prove that, but I'm not really, I don't think that's the best use of our time. But if we can really t quickly take a look at this graph. Here's the function that we started with, that y is equal to 3x plus 5, right here. Here's its inverse, here. And here is the line y is equal to x, and we can see that this is, is switched over that line, I'm sorry, reflected over that line. Okay, so that's kind of our refresher, okay? So there's our refresher on how all this is done. Now let's take a couple of pretty easy examples, and I'm going to do a part two where I just go through a bunch of examples, but let's take this one. y is equal to log base 3 of x, right? I'm going to solve for x here. I'm going to take this out of logarithmic form into exponential form. So I'm going to take this to this power. So we have 3, right? It's going to be equal to this. Remember how that works? So 3 to the y power is equal to x. We've now solved for x. Then we just switch, right? We switch x and y. So switch x and y. And we get y is equal to 3 to the x power, right? We can go back quickly and take a look at this, right? Take a quick look at these. And it will insert graphs. And this is the first function was log base 3 of x, right? So it's log base 3 of x. There's that function. <clears throat> and we said that it's inverse. We said that it's inverse was y equals 3 to the power of x. So we'll put that in and see what that looks like. 3 to the power of x. Interesting, right? And we, now we have to see if these are inverses, then, then this should be reflected over the line y equals x. So let's put that in and see if that's what we have here. And y equals x. There's a way to kind of take a look at that. And certainly that worked. Okay, so here's our next example, which I think is a little bit trickier. And uh, I don't know, given time, if we'll have time to, to go back and look at it or, or not as a graph, but let's just do it really quickly. Uh, and it's this one, and I think this is kind of the one you've probably been waiting for, that y is equal to ln of x plus 1. So I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to rewrite this as y equals ln, right? L, right? Remember that ln of x is equivalent to log base e of x. So if you don't mind, I'm going to write it that way. I'm going to write uh, log base e, whoops, log base e of x plus 1. And then I'm going to take it out of logarithmic form, right? Remember, this is really important. If you get this, I think this is going to be the best thing for you to get. Just remember, to get out of logarithmic form into exponential form, you take the base and raise it to this as an exponent, and it has to equal this. So, so this is equal to that, right? <clears throat> so if we look at that and do that little bit of math, so we're going, right, change to exponential form here, right? So to do that, it's e to the power of y. So e to the power of y 
Wow, that's a terrible y. e to the power of y is equal to x plus 1. And from here, right, remember we're solving for x here. So what I'm going to do on both sides, obviously, is add negative 1 to both sides, negative 1. And we get e to the power of y minus 1 is equal to x. And then remember, now people do this differently, I guess. Some people switch x and y first, and I don't think it matters. And if it does, comment and tell me why it matters. So now I'm going to switch. So I'm going to switch. That's a terrible switch. x and y. So here's my x. Right? So I'm just going to do that. And I'm going to take this e to the power of x minus 1 is equal to y. And this, right, this is the inverse of this. Right? If you put it into the you know, calculator, it, it will come out really, really good, actually. You'll be able to see it plainly. Okay, how much time do we have? Let's see what we're doing for time here. Oh, we're at 6.15. Okay, let's just take a really quick look so we can see if we agree on this. Okay? So let's do this. So go back to our calculator. Now, this is a CAS Inspire. Um, kind of like it, to be honest with you. Kind of like it. So let's do the first one, and that is y equals right ln of x plus 1. Right, and that's what we had. And hit enter. And there's that function, kind of good looking, I guess. And the new function is this one. We're still doing good for time. E to the x minus 1. So we have e to the x minus 1 is equal to 1. And we're saying that's the inverse, and there's that thing. <clears throat> And that is so cool. I love that. It's really cool. And look, it is reflected over the line y is equal to x. So I think that's what we got, I, and I think that's good work. So hopefully, I don't want to say you're impressed, but hopefully you get that. So here it is. I'm going to do uh, part two, and I'm going to talk less about how to do it and just kind of go through the iterations over and over and over so you can get a really, really good picture of how this is done. So keep up the hard work.